plans for HS2, the high-speed railway between Euston and Birmingham, are due to get the green light from Parliament any day now. If things go to plan, then work on the £56 billion project is due to start later this year. The trouble is high-speed rail may have an environmental cost and for some of the region's wildlife, the construction work could prove very damaging indeed. Naturalist and broadcaster Mike Dilger, he's been to Ricelip to find out more. This is magical. I'm at Broadwater Lake and I'm in wildfowl heaven. Just looking out there, I can see tufted duck, pochard, shoveler and mallard, in addition to birds like cormorants, swans and black-headed gulls as well. This is a triple SI, a site of special scientific interest. And it's a haven for thousands of birds that breed here, feed here and spend the winter in quiet solitude. This site is managed by the local wildlife trust. Tim Hill is the conservation manager. Tim, I think on a day like today, we're seeing Broadwater Lake at its best. Looking beautiful, isn't it? Uh, it's one of the most important places in the Culm Valley because a lot of birds come to this undisturbed refuge from way beyond this site, from up in Rickmansworth, from sites and down towards the Thames because it is so quiet and undisturbed. Undeniably important for birds. What about other wildlife? The River Colm just behind us here and the lake itself is a really important feeding area for Dorbenton's bats, the, the water bats, and they come here because of the insect life. But this tranquil spot will soon be home to a construction site. HS2 planned to build a three-kilometre serpentine bridge through the Colm Valley. The cutting-edge 250-mile-an-hour trains will link the route from London Euston to Birmingham, reducing journey times by half an hour. We certainly don't feel that it's progress when uh, there's going to be such devastation to the local environment. As we sit, Tim, where will it uh, go through Broadwater Lake? So the viaduct uh, will start just beyond the site here and it'll come through in, a, in an arc just clipping the bottom corner of Broadwater Lake, uh, just down in the distance there, yeah. across the River Cull and then through the woodland at the back and into Buckinghamshire. The Wildlife Trust believes the construction phase of the viaduct alone will lead to the disappearance of birds and other wildlife. There's a six-year construction period. Obviously, during that time, there's going to be huge amounts of noise, disturbance, dust, lights and all sorts. Potentially devastating to the birds that currently seek refuge on Broadwater Lake. Visitors like Dougal and Toby, who come here every day, are devastated. How do you feel about the impending development? Heartbroken. Can't, can't put it into words, really. I can't imagine what this place is going to be like with great big trains thundering through here. The, the rare birds that we get down here, we get quite a few. I've got quite a nice, nice list of wildlife that I've seen over the years. I don't, I don't see how it can survive. Um, the other really important species is the eels, the anguilla anguilla. They are red list, critically endangered and they manage to swim all the way here from the Sargasso Sea. And they can live up to 30 years in this habitat um, down this river. To take this site away for so long is appalling. I hate what they're doing to it. I'm so scared at the destruction of this perfect habitat. This end of the lake is, is a really important refuge. There's sailing on the top end of the lake at the moment, which means that all the ducks are squeezed into this bottom end. And you can imagine with the noise of the construction for that length of time, we're really concerned that all those wildfowl will be squeezed from both sides and they will have to find somewhere to, else to go. HS2 believes the birds here will adapt to the changes and says it's set to deliver the greenest railway in the UK. Where we touch on the uh, special scientific interest, um, we've got a plan for about four hectares of um, wetland uh, recreation and restoration. There won't be the effects that the Wildlife Trust are concerned about. 
What are your thoughts about HS2 taking environmental concerns seriously enough? We don't really think that HS2 have recognised the true impact of the construction and the ongoing running of the railway. Just a few yards from the lake is Battlesford Wood, an ancient woodland which is hundreds of years old. <laughs> Look at this beautiful old oak tree. I'd say it's probably 250 to 300 years old and it's bed and breakfast for a whole host of woodland birds and home to probably hundreds of different species of insects. This is an island nature reserve in its own right. And these lovely birch bracket fungi. So Richard, what's so special about this uh, block of woodland we're in at the moment? It's got uh, a wide variety of different species of trees. It's got different ages of trees, so you've got a different structure. You've got fallen dead wood around here as well. Uh, and we've got fungi growing on that wood and there's birds in the trees. But this area of ancient woodland will soon be lost to the HS2 route. Although there's less than a hectare here, in total, in the 34 woodlands affected, there's going to be 30 hectares of ancient woodland loss. That's the equivalent of 49 football pitches. But HS2 believe this loss can be compensated for. Along the line of the route, yes, we will have 30 hectares that are affected. Um, we will translocate or move the ancient woodland soils from the ancient woodlands that we affect, um, place that on new ground and create um, new woodland which will be connected to existing ancient woodlands and other ecological sites. So overall, from a biodiversity perspective, we will get to a bigger and better outcome. They're giving the impression that by translocating soil that will be mimicking ancient woodland, but of course it's not. It's a diminishing finite resource, it's irreplaceable. HS2's response to the loss of ancient woodland is they will plant five hectares of new woodland for every one like this that's lost. Uh, how do the Woodland Trust feel about that? We feel it should be at 30 to 1 and that would then give the appropriate level of restoration. This is setting a precedent for development in the, in the UK. So we feel that it should give the ancient woodland the respect it deserves. As a naturalist, my greatest fear is what projects like HS2 are doing to our wildlife. We already live in one of the most nature-depleted countries in the world, particularly in and around London. The State of the Nature report out recently suggested that one in every ten species here is facing extinction, and one of those is the much-loved hedgehog. Although it may look a little unkempt, uh, <laughs> overgrown, but it really is paradise for hedgehogs. The Regent's Park is the last park in central London to have hedgehogs, and we've probably got about 30 or so, but 25% of them live here in the zoo car park. This car park is the last bastion of hedgehogs in central London. I can understand the hedgehogs using the scrub here, but the car park? <laughs> it does seem slightly odd but actually the car park provides a real connectivity between all the scrubland. And we've used GPS on them and we've watched how they utilise all of the area, not just the undergrowth, but all of the area. But HS2 plan to use this car park to store lorries and construction vehicles, making it a danger zone for hedgehogs. The reason why we need to have the lorries in that car park is to uh, service the big construction work. But we're not ignoring the hedgehogs. We will create an access tunnel that will enable those hedgehogs to continue to thrive and still be able to use the space. HS2 just not listening. All we're asking them to do is look for alternatives. If HS2 come here for 20 years, we are saying goodbye to hedgehogs in central London. Well, I'm back at Broadwater Lake and dusk is steadily approaching and I'm watching little egrets coming into roost in those tall alder trees behind me. Any day now, HS2 will be given the go-ahead to build what's clearly a cutting-edge railway line. But along the way, there are definitely going to be some losers. And you know what? I'm looking right at them. <laughs>